All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about fig tree cold tolerance. What is the hardiness rating that a fig tree can withstand? What is the lowest temperature that a fig tree can reliably withstand? Um, and what are the different factors that influence that? Um, and what are the different fig varieties themselves that can actually withstand colder temperatures than others? And so the first thing I want to mention is the actual hardiness. Um, this is a, a, a number that is determined, obviously, by your USDA zone. You can look this up, go on the USDA's website, and find your growing zone. I'm here in a 7A, which is probably where I would say is the lowest you can go to reliably grow figs outside in the ground. And uh, that means because we get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, on a regular basis. And that is the cutoff for the very hardiest fig varieties and that are grown in the, the particular ways that enable them to actually reach their genetic potential. So something like Hardy Chicago is indeed a fig variety that's notorious for being very hardy and it can withstand temperatures of zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're gonna get below zero, you're gonna be in a 6B, so a zone colder than myself it's definitely recommended that you guys do some sort of protection, like wrapping is gonna give you another five degrees Fahrenheit. But zero degrees Fahrenheit is the absolute lowest. There might be some varieties, and I'm trialing a number of them here, that can withstand potentially a temperature lower than zero. And I'm sure a hardy Chicago has definitely survived temperatures below zero because it's not just about the absolute minimum temperature, but also the duration as well. It's the severity and the duration of that cold. So what are the, reliably though, the lowest temperature that you'll see where your fig tree will probably survive? And that I think is about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The average fig variety is somewhere hardy to about 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, that's the temperature where the tree won't take damage. Now, if for whatever reason, the entire top tr of your tree, it gets so cold that the whole top of it dies, if you planted it correctly, it'll always come back from the base. So that's usually not really a concern, but you do want to make sure they do survive so that you can actually get fruit set the following year. And that's really why we protect them, is that if we can preserve these tips, all the apical buds and the lateral buds, which are the really protruding buds that have the right hormonal balance below the growing tips, that, those are the buds that typically produce fruit the following year the easiest. So that's really why we're doing this. Those are the, the minimum temperatures. And then some of the varieties I think that you guys can um, try to find and grow if you're in a, a slightly colder place, maybe you're in a slightly warmer place than I in a, seven, uh, a 7B where you guys maybe see five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of these varieties here that I have planted in the ground are definitely a very hardy choice for people like yourself and people in uh, zone eights, you probably can get away with almost every fig variety. Uh, well, the majority of them in existence and reliably grow them where you're, where you're located. But for those of us in a 7A, a 6B, here are the hardiest figs. And I would highly recommend that if you guys want to see a full list, go to the description of the video. There is a blog post that I've written that lists out a number of these different varieties that you can find to reliably grow figs in your colder location. Um, it is really the genetics that play a huge part into how hardy these fig trees can be. And so before I list them off really quickly, the different varieties, let's talk about just the function of these varieties. So it is the genetics, right? Because just like us, we're limited by our genetics. I can't be seven feet tall, right? Um, just like a fig tree, we're not really that much different a fig tree can only be so hardy. And there's a couple factors I think in their genetic code that plays a part into that. Like how fast do they die in the fall, right? How fast do they go to sleep? Do they continue growing in the fall? Do they prepare for the winter properly? Do they lignify their branches well? A variety back here that I do find is relatively hardy called Smith or Texas BA1 is a fig that is actually notorious as one of the least hardiest figs. But this is a similar fig called Texas BA1 that does seem to do really well here for consecutive seasons. But about, I would say, I'd rate this at about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, this one, though, has the ability, 
uh, or doesn't have a good ability, excuse me, to lignify very well. And so the branches don't harden up properly. And that's the tree's really natural defense. So it's, it's not just about the varieties genetics, which I think does play a huge factor and uh, is the utmost importance, but your soil moisture goes a long way because if your tree is growing and growing all year, you certainly don't want it to continue growing into the fall because the winter's coming. And so trees just do this. A lot of fig trees love to grow when they have access to soil moisture. And so they'll just continue growing and they won't lignify in time. And that happens a lot in the south. So even though here in the northeast where I can reliably grow figs in a 7A, a 7A in the south is not equivalent necessarily uh, just because the trees in the south where there is a lot more soil moisture and a longer growing season could potentially not prepare as well for the winter to prepare for a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, of course is a lot less likely the further south you go. But nonetheless, that's the, uh, the case. So some of the varieties I really like are the Adriatics. This is a, a fig called JH Adriatic that's wildly been proven um, to be quite hardy to about five or even zero degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a new one that I've discovered is quite hardy called LSU Huye, bred by LSU in the 1950s. That again is Texas BA1. We have uh, Ron de Bordeaux back here, which is a tree that we, we actually wrapped because the branches were not very well lignified. And you can visibly see that there with the greener wood and thinner wood that was produced late in the season. And so by wrapping it, we were able to protect this and it looks like it never even went through the winter time. It's amazing. We also have Moro de Caneva, or this one here is called Fico Seco. I have a uh, Narino over there that's also another Moro de Caneva. This is Little Ruby, which was actually bred by Denny McGaughy um, with Hardy Chicago. So Hardy Chicago is one of the parents, and therefore that gene of hardiness was passed down to its child. Here is a, a Naruccio de Elba, also another very hardy fig from Italy, the island of Elba. Here is the Narino that does really well in colder places, a great commercial fig. This is Safari from uh, Trees of Joy. Shout out to Bass. This is LSU Tiger, another LSU fig that was, by the way, bred with Celeste, and Celeste is a very hardy fig, which right here is a type of Celeste I have called Stallion. And uh, in general, Celeste does wonderful in colder places. This is a hardy Chicago I have called Azores Dark. This is another Naruccio de Elba. We have a fig here called Confeji Black. This is a hardy Chicago as well, another Azores Dark. We have another fig here that's of French origin all over Europe called Long de Oot. It's a giant fig that tastes like uh, cotton candy. It's so sweet. Here we have Campanieri, and I have a number of these on the property. This is one of the younger ones that uh, has survived the winter, but that one may even survive below zero. This is Green Maturinska, a fig called, uh, or from Bulgaria, excuse me, from a, a colder place in Europe that actually the mother tree of Green Maturinska is really quite large. And so it makes sense that it would absolutely do well here and have great hardiness. So. Those are some of the varieties I would highly recommend, guys, going to the blog, figboss.com. Put the link in the description. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.